This episode of Hobie is sponsored by Ho Jeff. Save 25% with promo code HobiePod. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 482. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm Blake. I'm Jim. And I'm Brian. And we have film critic to the stars with us, Scab Jeff. Welcome, Scab. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. That's right. Uh, So you're going to be sitting with us for some Oscar talk today. I've seen... All of them but one. How many That's movies is that? Films? I think it's like 130, 140 oh. or something. Oh. Now, some of them are shorts. Uh, Documentary fif- shorts. 15 of them are shorts. There's five animated shorts, five live action, five documentary. Okay. Do you feel Turning Red was screwed out of Best Picture nominee? I did not love Turning Red. I liked... I liked, I think, all of the other animated yeah, feature ones better. Turning Red was not my favorite. Did There's you no. see all the animated features? No. You always see all the animated features. I know. I, c- I come close to it. We'll talk about it. Uh, I think I saw two this year. Uh, Out of 140, how much were actually worth watching? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, there were probably 20 to 30 that were pretty hard to watch. But- Lie. But the rest were were pretty good. What was the most? Uh, oh, hello. Uh, what was the worst film you saw of the year that was nominated? Well, the most uncomfortable to watch is I went to see the animated shorts with my wife and mm-hmm. my mom, and one of the animated shorts is called "My Year of Dicks," <laughs> which is about a girl who's trying, uh, like a, I think, like a. 15 year old girl trying to lose her virginity or something and there's some dark sexual scenes and i'm sitting next to my mom and i'm like oh god when will this be over when will this be over <laughs> so it was probably a good one but it was uncomfortable watching it with my mother so you're saying uh it's not a family film it is definitely not a family film and before it depends it, on your family that's true and the the guy the it was we went to the uh, the Cincinnati World Cinema downtown, the, the theater downtown, mm-hmm. and some guy came out to give a prelude to everything, and he was talking, and he's like, there's going to be a card before the My Year of Dicks, the last one, saying that if you have any children, you probably want to take them out because it's not appropriate for children. But there's no nudity. You don't see any penises or anything <laughs> like that, and it's and you could keep the kids in here. You could not keep the kids in there. <laughs> but the card was well, well informative. <laughs> Is uh, was it a well hung card? Ah, oh. <sighs> sorry, I'm not sure. I, I wanted the first room shot over yeah, there. Yeah, I knew you did, and damn didn't it, deserve it. <laughs> we got a new sound effects machine. We got a new mixer, and Je- Jeff's over there playing with some sound effects. Jeff, what we got over there for sound effects? 
You just want to shoot our load no, right no, off no, the no, bat? No. Uh, well, we're talking about being I mean, a dick, so I was trying. <laughs> I played a funky music intro when we uh, That's true. introduced Scab Jeff, though no one else heard it because it went straight to the mix. It was funky. I, I asked for sound effects eight fucking years ago. We and, finally got it. And we got them. Yeah. Th- th- this, uh, you didn't give us a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> well, the podcast money is now starting to roll in. Yes. Yes. I finally started churning some of those Hobie coins out. How many we got? Uh, well, after the mixer and your new headphones. And I, new... I paid for these out of my own pocket. No, you didn't. I and, did. No, you didn't. <laughs> yes. Uh, and the new microphone. Uh-huh. Um, we owe one Hobie <laughs> coin. <laughs> Uh, but, but you wrote a Hobie IOU for I it. Did. I put yep. Okay, put it in a briefcase. I did. Okay, uh, it's in the crypto bank. Good, good. Nothing can ba- bad can come from that. Excellent. Um, what was your favorite film of the year? Not, not, not best, but favorite. That's uh, that's hard to say. Uh, close, the Belgian film. It was real, real good, and I just saw it, so that might be okay. That might, but Tar, I think. That's the one that's definitely going to be taught in film school and will be remembered in 20 years. I know nothing about Tar. I've heard about it. Uh, Kate Blanchett is the star of... Okay. Is it a comedy? Uh, it's not. N- okay. And honestly, I didn't understand what was really going on half the movie, but mm-hmm. uh, what they did with uh, technically was, was phenomenal. So it's like Westworld, the TV series. Uh... <laughs> I like where your comparisons come out of nowhere. <laughs> well, it's true. Westworld. I don't know what's going on, but it looks beautiful, right? <laughs> well, I'm not sure that's what I was saying, but I... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Just go with it, Jeff. Just go with it. Go with this game. Smile and nod. That's right. Uh-huh. Well, we will be getting to that in the News of the Geek section here, the Oscar nomination. Because you, you have now hit above 80% the last two years. Um, this is going to be tricky this year, though. There's a lot of them that are real close runners for one, two, and three. No runaway favorites. Uh, this there's year. one runaway favorite, uh, animated feature. I've known, I know like uh, five of these films. Um, but anyways, Blake, did you watch All Quiet on the Western Front? That's up for Best Picture. Surprisingly, yeah, I did actually this weekend. Did you? Mm-hmm. I know you were talking about it. Did you like it? It was okay. It was good. Okay. If you read the book, it's mm-hmm. not like the book, but it's an adaptation. If you want the book, go do the one that John Boy Walton did back in 79. Okay. How okay. about the one Learn from... Borg 9. How about the one from, like, what, 32? I haven't seen that yet okay. because I don't speak silent. <laughs> it was not silent. Well, I had the volume down. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he hit mute on accident. <laughs> this I is thought a, it was a silent pick. <laughs> this is a really artistic film. It's all silent. I was wondering where the subtitles were. I was like, damn, they expect me to read lips. <laughs> Back in the 1930s, everybody read lips. That's, That's what, what I thought. Was. Yeah. Yeah. They were a smarter time. That's also why he hated uh, the artist. No, the Star Wars uh, <laughs> movies. The yeah. last three he watched with no sound. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I should have That's turned the why the last Jedi I made sh- no sense. <laughs> I should have turned the sound down for all those uh, films. No, but seriously, it, it, it's still good. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it's kind of interesting. After I watch it, then I started reading the things about it, and one of the articles I, I read is like it was more like war porn, and I was like, well, yeah, if you like that, you know, like a graphic, pro- graphic, you know, horrors of war kind of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of like a Saving Private Ryan, like when they're storming the beach. Worse. Really? Yeah, there's some scenes in there that's worse, I think. Oh. But yeah, I mean, all right, so yeah, appreciate the horrors of war. Mm-hmm. And when I say appreciate, I mean, don't admire, but remember why you shouldn't go to war in the fucking first place. Mm-hmm. You know, with normal people forced into abnormal situations, right? So, yeah, like you said, Saving Private Ryan, the horrors of war there storming the beaches of Normandy, for example. Yeah. Right? Hor- horrible. Landing crafts, first first, la- first rows of landing crafts, they all knew they were going to die. Mm-hmm. You know, and so same thing with trench warfare. You you go in, you know, once again, you know, almost kind of like the uh, the American realist period post the Civil War. Oh, yeah. Glories of war. We're going to go fight for this. And, you know, fatherland, da, 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 da. And you're induced to realities very quick and you realize what kind of shit conditions. You know, granted, now it's from the German perspective because mm. it's a German film, you know, but same thing. 
you know, you know, people on both sides, you know, Germans and the folks more in Germans and the French, you know, horrible conditions, horrible, you know, horrors of war, basically. And you realize that, you know, all this glory and bullshit that you're fed, you know, back in the homelands to go fight on the front lines, you get to the front lines, you're like, you know, none of that shit fucking matters. All you want to do is survive. Yeah. Is this, and I'm not trying to be funny, like, is this a... Anti-war Sub- war movie. Yeah. No, 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 no. Is it a subtitled film? Uh, it, you, it, yes, actually, is it, you can get it dubbed in English. Or is it you German? Can, okay. Or you can read it. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't mind reading subtitles, but for this, I didn't. I wanted to focus on the visual aspects of mm-hmm. it because I heard it was very visual, and it is. It's beautiful. Well, I say beautiful. I, I it's almost one. That's the wrong word to say. Mm-hmm. Very graphic in the fact that you can appreciate. Let me say, you can appreciate the uh, cinematography and, and what they did. And so I read, you know, this was actually a big field, several like several acres large. It wasn't like on a green screen or, or mm-hmm. a field or CGI. And the best part was it was muddy and it was a field that uh, they actually used. And it was very good. I liked it. Do you agree with that, Scamp? Uh, the movie was good. I speak German, so I didn't have to use the subtitles either. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm, I'm kidding. I don't speak German. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. But I watched it with subtitles because I can't stand, I can't stand dubbed, but it was, yeah. it was very visually, uh, visually it was very, uh, very good. Yes. So better World War One film, that or, uh, 1917? 1917 was better at... Okay, that or Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, all Quiet on the Western Front. Close, though. It was a close second. Way be- All of those are way better than War Horse, though. Oh, that oh. fucking movie. So fucking Spielberg. <laughs> I don't uh, know. I, I would almost say that this was better than 1917. But I... I I think because it was more focused, right? My, you know, on the main character. Going to cats. film school, I look for yeah. like long continuous 19, scenes. 1917 like was 1917. all one, one shot. It one was all shot. one shot, which was fascinating right. for a war I, for I, which I admit, is fascinating for a war film. Maybe if you're true. looking at it from yes, tugging at the heartstrings and stuff. It oh, yeah, all quite both on the Western front would be. How is the American dub and dubbed version, Blake? That's the <laughs> it, biggest question. It was good. I mean, okay. you, you, you. It, it, I would say that it was more so visual that you didn't have to focus on their mouths not matching the, okay. the sounds that come up. Did the dubbing yeah. speak with a German accent? Because that would be awful. No, no it was actually Keanu Reeves, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher <laughs> Walken, right. Sylvester Stallone, yeah. and Morgan Freeman. No, they're <laughs> they're they're all they're all British. And <laughs> German. even the, the Germans and the French, they all had British accents. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know, but what what was kind of interesting is that I think um, uh, what's his name who played um, the the the, the anti hero bad guy and Falcon in the Captain America. Oh, uh, Sebastian was, Stan. No, not Sebastian Stan. The oh. bad guy with the mask, the flag smasher guy. The, Bane. Uh, oh, he's in it. And the he, U.S. agent guy. No, 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 not U.S. agent. The flag smasher guy was a girl. No, 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 oh. no. He was. Helping them with the flag smashers. Um, okay, but I'm going to say yes. Remember who he was the bad is, guy. But... He was the bad guy in uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier. Who uh, Frank Grillo? Oh, um, not Frank Grillo. Uh, Cross, crossbones. <laughs> you know the 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 guy. What's his Baron name? Baron Zemo. Robert yeah, Red yeah, Red Zemo. Yes, yeah. oh, Zemo. Okay, yeah. He, he's Zemo. in this film, and he actually um, uh, plays one of the Weimar uh, Republic. Uh, the Weimar Republic. After the Kaiser abdicates, and mm-hmm. they go to no- negotiate the peace. And I was like, I know this guy. I was like, yeah, that's right. It's Zemo. I couldn't remember his yeah. name. And he was dubbed in his voice. I wonder if he dubbed his own voice. I can yeah. go back and look at the credits because, yeah. yeah, but he's, you know, obviously speaking German, but that was his voice. And I'm like, yeah, I know that guy. Was it odd that he was saying that he was Baron Zemo in it? <laughs> well, when he's wearing the mask with the eye holes cut out and asking, I will for, take over Germany. And asking for peace and saving thousands of lives, that was kind of disturbing. I, I didn't match. I don't know. I, Although I would have had a problem watching the dubbed one if they were all speaking with British accents because I need subtitles to watch British films. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> some, some of those Cockney accents. Full like, Monty, I needed say? it. <laughs> I know they're speaking English, but it's not my English. Mm. No, but it down the hall. But a oh, good sorry. Netflix series that I've been watching, the you know barbarians, barbarians, yeah, right. So they're you know the Roman, you know pre pre you know post Kaiser, mm. you know uh, 
post Caesar when they're finding the Germanic tribes. You know, what is really cool about that, I do watch that on subtitles because the voices suck. Mm-hmm. The dubbing sucks. So I watch the original, the original Latin? Yes. The Romans speak Latin. Really? <laughs> and so I can hear my Italian in Latin in there. And the German tr- Germanic tribes speak German. And, of course, you can pick up the English words, you know, from the old German. And so I do enjoy that. I do watch watching that and reading the subtitles. That is pretty cool. I was just asking because, like, Squid Game... Like, had some really okay dubbing, and then some really, really bad dubbing in it. Um, yes. So well, I, was just, I was just curious how it was. Yeah. Why do you watch shows and movies dubbed? <laughs> that, I don't always, but that I one watched, I did. Yeah, I Squid watched that. Game? I yeah. watched Squid Game subtitled. Cause oh, I like, okay. Because, you know, if I watch it and I, I get that cognitive dissonance with their mm-hmm. mouth and everything moving, then I'll go to the, you know, once you start with the dialogue with, with the subtitles, and you hear their actual voices... I think it makes a lot of difference in your characters, too. Especially with Korean shows, if you watch it dubbed in English mm. with English sub- or with closed captioning, it's completely... With English closed captioning, yeah. the, the words are completely different than what they're saying, but you can kind of see how they're kind of matching. Yeah. It's, it's fun to, to watch see the just a little bit to, to confuse yourself for a little bit. Like, that's not what he's saying. Brian? Yes, Jason. We heard what they saw. What did you watch this weekend? Um, what did I watch this weekend? I don't know. I watched uh, the Netflix documentary on the Murdoch trial ah, in South Carolina. How is that? Um, I could tell you how it ends. <laughs> guilty. What? Ah, oh, spoilers! And he's guilty. Uh, guilty as yeah. charged. He's not a good guy, is he? The whole family. No. The, they're all fucked. Yeah. Um, um, well, the ones that are still alive that he didn't kill. One. Allegedly. Allegedly. No. Well, no, no, no we can't say that. Nope. He was found no, guilty. Yeah, he was found guilty. Yeah. Yep. yep. Woo! We don't say allegedly. USA. USA. Um, yeah, I, uh, th- I watched the trial, like, I had it on in the background a lot, uh, like, the real trial and that. It was like, this guy's not a good guy. Like, So, probably a year or so ago, I listened to a podcast that they did, like, a true crime podcast. Um, that was kind of detailing like the news stories. Mm-hmm. One of the reporters from the news, one of the news stations down there, was had a podcast and she started like following it. So like I kind of knew about it, and yeah. then like it, like the trial started. So that's yeah. But so I, it's been on my radar, and I, I, I knew pretty much what, what was going what, on. What was going on, but. Still, I I do have a question because you know originally I had no idea what the hell these trials were about. Mm-hmm. You guys enlightened me, right? Yeah, last week. So yeah, so I was listening to a another podcast, breaking what? breaking points, and they talked about this today, and they said it was very disconcerting in the fact you know in the, in the rule of law, right? I mean, you know, in the realm of you know innocence and guilt and etc., that almost all of the evidence that they had collected on him was all cell phone evidence that they pieced mm-hmm. together using his cell phone, yep. his son's cell phone, mm-hmm. even his wife's cell phone and yeah. everything like that so that that there was no actual, you know, first-hand witnesses, nope. no confession like that. All they did was use cell phone data to place them at certain places and times and use GPS data and et cetera, yep. which is not 100% reliable. No. But that video but, that his son took it was is... All, it was all technological, technologically circumstantial evidence. Mm-hmm. And now, so I didn't see, I didn't see, I didn't see the documentary, and I only know from what you guys, yeah. you know, educated me and what I heard today mm-hmm. on that uh, other podcast. So is that accurate? Did yeah, they didn't have anything, no yeah. visual, no whatever. They it's did all ha- basically, his cell phone was here, his cell phone was there, and then his cell phone went to this location, which was supposedly his alibi, and then after the alibi location, da da da, da. So they did get um, shell, uh, the, the bullets, they pretty much confirmed that they came from his guns, uh, his two guns. Um, that pretty much, I think, that did not help his case, obviously. So that was the physical evidence that they had. Okay. Um, now, they they fired his guns. Now, mm-hmm. were uh, samples, gunpowder samples taken from his hands? That was the issue. The they did not. The Met? I, don't, uh, I don't think they that's, did. That's a big deal. Right? Well, the other question is, too, that I don't think they ever found his guns. I think well, he... Well, they never... Well, okay. Yeah, I think they hit... He... Well... Somebody... 
took them. Well, either I think it was like his brother or like somebody else. Yeah, uh, is seen like removing them from the house. Yeah. shortly after. Yeah, and that they're ne- they haven't been recovered. Good news is that guy's never getting out ever. No, um, it's it's like when you look when you piece like the doc the Netflix thing. So it, like they start it where his kid hit uh, with the boat it, with the boat accident, mm-hmm. and then so like the girl dies in the boat accident, mm-hmm. and then from there that kind of triggers all of these chain of events of things that yep. happen. Like they're trying to cover up the boat accident yeah. and his kid goes to trial. And then after that, then whatever, I don't remember whatever the next yeah. thing that happened was. So like the kid actually never really went to trial. Yeah. And then something else happened. What? Uh, like the maid in the house. Yeah. They, they uh, are going back and reinvestigating that now. Right. Because she like may or been may- there made for like 20 years and then she mysteriously fell up the stairs yes. and killed herself. She tripped over the dogs. Yeah, that's Blame what Blame the dogs. They, they tripped, she tripped over the dogs going up the stairs and hit her head. Yeah. She died. And then there was a kid that was 15 that got ran over by a truck, hit and run. That and, and that w- was even before the boat yes. thing. <laughs> that may, may or may not have had a relationship with somebody in that family. So <laughs> that, was not, that was frowned upon. So yeah. they're now investigating that case. It, but the thing, like he was supposed to be going it, it to trial on the fr- the fraud case mm-hmm. because he told the housekeeper's yeah. family to file like he had an insurance policy that he like wh- I don't remember what it was, but like the, he told them to file the wrongful death suit and then his insurance would pay them. Yeah, and then he took. All of the money from yeah, like four like million dollars, I think, four point three million dollars that this family was supposed to get, and he kept it. Yeah, and then like he was the makes sense. Like, oh yeah, two or three days before he was supposed to stand trial for that is when he had this guy try to kill him. Yes, <laughs> attempted suicide, uh, attempted murder, attempted murder, <laughs> so that he wouldn't a have to stand trial for that, and b. His kids could have his life insurance plus the life insurance that he stole from the other people, and then they had no claim to it. Somehow, there's a legal thing that they talked yeah. about. So, like it's it like when you put it all together, it's, it's it's crazy. I just like when he got up on the stand to testify on his behalf, which is not a good idea. And he's like, "I may have lied about all this stuff, but I'm not lying now." <laughs> and they're like. <laughs> did you really? I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, they did not. Yeah, I, was uh, he under oath? Yes, in a court of law yes. about all that other stuff. No. So then you're allowed to lie. About ah, it. I guess so. Maybe. Maybe if he didn't swear an oath. Then you can't believe anything. You know, you, get, you might have a point. You might have. But a once point. they swear an oath, they're telling the you truth. You know what? Maybe he is innocent. <laughs> he was telling the truth. Damn it! Yeah, but like another just, innocent man in jail. Just the whole like when you look at the whole thing and like put it put it all together it's like it's so nuts. it's mind-boggling it is you need like a what is it the little yeah. flow chart thing yeah. you know what jeff when in this country is a rich white man ever going to get due justice this is ridiculous i know god it Wait sounds like like they can make a whole uh three five season netflix series out of this well they already made a four episode documentary there you go. three or four yeah i think it was three but Coming to NBC Mondays at 10 p.m., the Murdoch case. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, damn it. Okay. Yeah. Well. On it, Night it, Court. It, <laughs> on <laughs> Night Court. <laughs> $500 fine. No Gabby Stone hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this magic trick. <laughs> Jim, anything for you? No, I really didn't watch anything this week. Okay. Uh, I started uh, Chernobyl on HBO Max. Hmm. Like from like five years ago? Yeah. Yep. yeah. It's on the outline because it's up to date. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. Mm-hmm. It was a good show. Uh, well, here's the thing. So my wife and I, when we start watching shows, like especially new shows, she she made a good point like this weekend. She's like, I hate watching like White Lotus. Great show. But then we got to wait like another eight months to a year and we don't know what the hell's going on anymore. Man, that, that that's just rough problems to have. It is tough. So she's like, I feel like we need something that's already done. I was like, oh, well, I've been looking for Chernobyl. Let's do that. 
was like three years ago. Okay, shut up, Jeff. Okay, it wasn't five. Uh, how about Jessica Jones? That seemed a little longer, right? We, uh, I finished it. No, no, you didn't. <laughs> um, I finished episode five. Probably not. I started it. Maybe, maybe. But Chernobyl was amazing. Like, if you really want to get pissed off at a government, damn, that was uh, that was unbelievable. Down the hall. Sorry. Uh, hey, the core explodes. It's okay. Yeah, the cores don't explode. It's a government. Uh, I, I think it's a we're government okay to get... criticize the Soviets. <laughs> yeah, it's a government you can get upset about. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, it's amazing, like, just to see the bullshit that happened with that. Um, and May just... of 2019 is when it came. Yeah, out. yeah. Four so... years ago. <laughs> Three and a half. <laughs> Almost four. <laughs> Almost four. Uh, but it's amazing. It's a really good show. I, um, I went to look it up, and I typed in Chernobyl, and mm-hmm. Chernobyl miniseries, I clicked on that, and it said 1986. I went, no. That's when they predicted when it would happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when they were talking about how great this power plant called Chernobyl is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's really well done, yeah. though. I highly recommend it. I only know about Chernobyl from Call of Duty. Oh, that's right. You did. I don't think it's the same one. <laughs> oh. Um, but yeah, it's it's a hell of a show. Uh, so that's my recommendation. Jeff, anything for you? Wrap this section Whatever up. I watched, I forgot that I watched it. Okay. Anybody watched the new season, what, of The Mandalorian? Oh, episode that's one? What I watched yeah. episode one, yeah. Episode one. Go ahead, Jimmy. I didn't watch it yet. No. I, I said I didn't watch anything. <laughs> I just asked, did anybody else watch we'll do it? We well, because it's one week. See, when I, Steve and Izzy were here, yeah, Jason and I talked in depth about it at the... Yes, Steve and Izzy, Steve yeah, Travis. The there was something to talk in, in depth, depth about? Yeah, yeah like we're DG. like... It might have been one of the worst episodes they've had. That's the why we <laughs> talked in depth about it. I mean, there was nothing in that episode. You didn't like the Pirates from Babylon 5? No, I hated the Pirates. <laughs> I thought it was the Pirates from the Pirates of the Caribbean with all the squid head faces. It was a squid head. <laughs> the Western names. I mean, uh, they had the new adorable little technicians that were smaller than Grogu. They were so cute. Well, they were in, um, they were in the film. Yeah, I know. I but, like Grogu hugging them. That was kind of yeah. cute. All right. We, yeah, no was it, now, was he hugging them because he thought they were cute, or was he trying to eat them? Uh, I was hoping that he was eat, eating them. Uh, and he's not allowed to eat things anymore because that was a big backlash of him she, eating those eggs. Eating the frog eggs? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's just not right. He's killing an endangered species. This species does not exist. <laughs> this is all fake. <laughs> None of this is real. <laughs> What is William Shatner saying the Saturday Night Live sketch? <laughs> All of you need to get a life. <laughs> you, have you ever kissed a girl? <laughs> Move out of your parents' basement. I like how he came back and apologized because the guy that ran the convention was like, uh, was showing him his contract like, yeah, you need to look at this. You're... Oh, that was the evil Kirk from episode uh, 25. 25 uh, <laughs> the enemy within. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> It, like I said, <laughs> Mandalorian, I love Star Wars, but I'm like, what the hell is the point of this episode? <laughs> like, you know, yeah. Bo- hey. Bo-Katan looks pretty lazy. I mean, of course, <laughs> she's got that big Papasan thrown to them. Yeah. Lay on. Hey. All day. This is where we drink. Yeah. It's a school now. Well, we're drinking here. There's a bar right down the street, <laughs> but we're drinking in the school. How about you drink in my mayor's office? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. We're drinking here. This is the dumbest conversation yeah. I've ever seen. <laughs> what are we doing here? I yearn for the day where I can have so little amount of things going on in my life that I could be mad on the internet about a fictional endangered species, endangered species <laughs> going away. They killed her family. He kill- He almost killed the whole uh, species, Brian. You don't understand. You're right. I, I do not. <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> I forgot about that outrage. Oh, yeah, you can get mad at that, but you can abort any baby you want to in this country. Hey, down the hall, down the hall. <laughs> no, actually, actually, no, you can't anymore. They no, repealed no, down that. The hall, down the hall. <laughs> uh, on a side note, though, about things that are scummy in the world, uh, TMZ, uh, they published a photo of Bruce Willis, who has early onset dementia, out in public, and the headline was, he looks confused. confused. Well, no shit, Sherlock. He has dementia. How about you don't fucking take his picture, you asshole? Yeah, yeah. Just have some compassion and just let him be with his family and spend you're, time. You're talking about the paparazzi? Yeah, fuck yeah. them. 
his family had to put a press release out like, yeah. please don't take pictures of him if he's out. Like, it confuses him. And then they're like, well, he looks confused. Well, no shit. <laughs> like, yes, that's the, that's the disease. Hey, I got to feed my family and pay the bills. Let's take a picture of this I got to take a picture of anybody and sell it for money. I hate to see how much somebody paid for those photos. Ugh. Somebody did? No, yeah. I, I know that they up. did. I'm just saying, I don't. I would hate to see how much they... And even TMZ put them up. <sighs> yeah. So, that, that's, uh, mm-hmm. that was my uh, beef of the week with that. You know you put too many syllables in dementia, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dementia. <Yeah. laughs> you know what, Jeff? I have a speech impediment. <laughs> uh, brain impediment. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Yes. Oh. Uh, we did have a poll of the week this week. At we did? Bad Ideas Podcast. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, what new season of an HBO series are you most looking forward to? White Lotus? Velma? I put that on there just for the outrage. Mm-hmm. Uh, House of the Dragon? And Curb Your Enthusiasm. Put that on there for Blake. I voted for Velma. Uh, in last place, White Lotus with 15%. Nobody's looking forward to it. Not as much as the other one. Well, because the season just ended. Yeah. Isn't that when you really want to see the next season, though? Yeah. Uh, well, it's their anthologies. It's not a... Oh, okay. They have like one or two recurring characters. I yeah. think they said Connie Britton might be coming back for this one. Oh, not Connie Britton. Oh, that might go on my top five this week. Hey, uh, hey. Hey, <laughs> stay on target. Uh, in third place, curb your enthusiasm with twenty percent, and winning thirty eight hey. to twenty seven percent. House of the Dragon beating out Velma. Velma Damn came it. in second because it's a it's a quality show. No, no, social media told me it's not. Oh, well, my vote counted. House of the Dragon. Yeah, hey, look at that. I voted for House of the Dragon too. I didn't even finish the first season. The sequel. Yes, House of the Dragon 2. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Scab, what do you pick? I'd pick House of the Dragon. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Velma. Mm-hmm. On the coattails of Riverdale? No. No. No? Not Are at you all. Sure? Yeah. Taking, I, taking a beloved cartoon and then throwing some weird fucked up shit, you know, on top of to it, making it for se- pre- several seasons and doing the same thing with another beloved cartoon and... Is Riverdale or is Making Archie beloved? But to be fair, she was one to make the show, and HBO Max told you make it about Scooby Doo, and she's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> she did not have like she wrote a script, and they're like, yeah. put the Scooby Doo characters in because we have this uh, because we got this Riverdale success. You hey, like, last season coming up, capture that. Thank Wait, goodness, still on. Yes, oh, it's God. still on. Yeah, I saw the new season was coming up, and I didn't realize it was still on. I thought it was. Stop off the watching air. Riverdale. Oh, they are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is it. So I picked up a conversation heart because mm-hmm. we have those, and I have to read one every week. Yeah, I think it says happy, but it could be hungry. Oh. It's probably hungry. Maybe it says Hoppy for Easter. Oh. Maybe or Hoppy because that IPA that you so Ooh. enjoy drinking. Yeah, I doubt it says Hoppy. Maybe. Uh, the one I picked up. Harpy? Maybe it says Harpy. Oh. <laughs> the one I picked up said Puppy Love. Oh. I think that's illegal. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you went there. We are in Indiana. You know, speaking of going there. Cincinnati Comic Expo, September 22nd through the 24th. You should go there. Get your tickets now at CincinnatiComicExpo.com. Jim, who did they announce today? Uh, would that be uh, Shenick Fan? Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ming-Na Wen. There you go. Uh, she, along with Christina Ritchie, is going to be there. Uh, Jim Lee is going to be there. Uh, Brad Pitt is going to be there. No, no, that one's not official. Oh, sorry. That one's not official. Um, and Hobie will be there, too. So get your tickets since I comic expo dot com uh, and September 22nd through 24th at the Duke Energy Convention. Center. Is Gina Carano going to be there? Uh, maybe as a guest, like as a person that bought a ticket. Maybe. I'm not sure. Is William um, Shatner coming back? I don't know. Because he could be like visiting his horse farm that weekend in northern. Kentucky. He could. He could. And uh, pop up so he can drive. Uh, maybe Data. You know. Data. Yeah. Brent Spiner. Yeah. Maybe he's there. I'm hoping Jody Benson comes back. She's always fun. She is a good. She is a good guest. Jody Benson. Maybe yeah. Katie Cassidy will show up. Yeah. Uh, no. William, so moving on. William's well, going to drive uh, Andrew's uh, little cart around the other place. <laughs> That's what I think he's going to do. <laughs> You're going to steal that. He, this he's year not going to sign anything or do any panels. No. He's just going to drive it around and knock he's people just over. Show up and, yeah, exactly. 
This is my favorite card. Like he did last year. <laughs> William Shatner coming through! And leave, and leave Andrew standing there next to the green room. Where's your horn sound effect? Come on! I don't have a horn sound effect. Oh, damn it. Now, now she won't come on the show. Okay, let's do some listener feedback. Ooh, I saw a flashing button. <laughs> All right, time for the uh, bomb listener feedback, sponsored by Scab Jeff at the Oscars. We always start off with this one guy, Scab Jeff. Uh, Ape hands. He can't give himself a nickname. (laughs) Yay! Number one fan. Big D. Formerly known as? Chili Billy. The Postman. Dad. Dad. Oh, I thought you were forgetting that, Brian. Sorry. What, no. Have I ever forgotten that? I'm sorry. He waits for the end. Sorry. sorry. Shut yeah. up, Jason. Sorry. It's just being Doug. He always <laughs> delivers thrice. Oh. It says, Sonny D has a vodka seltzer out now. I can what Sunny would be D the be worst Doug's beverage nickname? to mix with alcohol? <laughs> Sonny <laughs> Doug. Change approved. <laughs> Trademark. Trademark. Sorry, Blake. I just had to put that in there. It's all right. Sunny D. <laughs> I should have realized that the dot, dot, dot was for me to pause for funny inserts. <laughs> funny joke have here. You, have you ever done this before? <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Blake. Sunny D. Has a vodka seltzer out now. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Yeah, insert your comment now. We already did that. Oh, <laughs> I was trying to re- redo we this. a mixer we could cut this. Because we got a new mixer so we can edit and be fancy. Ah, we could, but we're not. Why would we? All right, hold on. <laughs> Let me do, after I say Sunny D, play a sound effect. Sunny D! That was the wrong sound That was effect. applause. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't give, you didn't give me time you. to cue one up here. Give, give and me it's time here. for news for the gig. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we could answer your question there, Doug. You got to be quicker on this. We couldn't even finish reading the whole thing before we answered it. And how good at this we I'm are. I'm not sure what he's asking. <laughs> he's asking if Sonny D should be Doug's new nickname. Oh, yeah. Yes. Most yes. definitely. Yeah. Let's do this. I like it. Sonny D, the worst fake orange juice drink out there for you. <laughs> Yeah, let's add, let's add no, some let's alcohol add some seltzer to it. <laughs> is it the worst, though? Oh, it's horrible. It is I bad. Know, uh, but is it it's the bad. Worst? I mean, as far as like, health-wise goes, it's pretty bad. I think that watering it down to make it taste like seltzer There's, would make it worse than <laughs> it already is, right? It. It's already watered it's down like, from orange juice. Oh, I mean, it's what about that orange, orange drink juice. they served us in school? Oh, we never got that. Fanta? <laughs> no, like the little milk cartons you could get in Orange drink. Oh, also. we never had that. Oh, uh, we did. Tang. We the, did. I, th- I thought did, those were just were like lugs. <laughs> I just drank fourteen milks a day instead. Oh, okay. The chocolate milk was awful because it tasted like paper. <laughs> nope, nope. I drank a lot of that too. <laughs> oh yeah. I went with jungle juice. Oh, we didn't have that. You're fancy. I went with Phoenix. grape drink. <laughs> I went with grape ape. I went with those jugs. You know those little plastic jugs? Yeah, the little hugs. Yeah. Little hugs. Yeah. Yeah, the right. pride just said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. 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 See, there's your rim shot. Come on. Sure, maybe the sand trap balloon. Yeah. But there it is. Blake the one... completely ignoring Brian once again. <laughs> the one that goes bong, 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 bong. So Doug wants to know what would be the worst beverage to mix with alcohol. <laughs> Sunny D. <laughs> I think he answered your own question. Uh, the Jones uh, <laughs> turkey, and gravy, <laughs> turkey gravy, gravy, gravy soda. Root soda. It's right there. Right. It is I a really was good. I want to say tequila. Oh, you don't like tequila, do you? Not at the all. The worst beverage. Okay. Here, I got my bourbon here. I, what, can, what can I ruin this bourbon with? Tequila. tequila. <laughs> <laughs> so, like uh, when they came out with tequila, yeah, the tequila. Cerveza, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, tequila ruining beer. Yep, uh-huh. I was thinking Correct. milk. Mixing that with vodka seltzer would not be good either. Mm. Well, with vodka seltzer, yes, yeah. but he just said alcohol. Yeah, There's other drinks with... that you put yeah. milk in, like, like, like a white Russian, like a white Russian. Nah. Oh. It's called a dead. Jason's called a dead Russian. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to say a pumpkin. <laughs> 
Yes, yes, that was. Now, uh, does pumpkin itself count as a beverage? It's got to be a beverage. I I managed to turn a pumpkin into a beverage. <laughs> blenders, they no, no, no. blenders. No, um, I had a, just a, a hole and a spigot. I had a pumpkin, <laughs> a power drill, and a uh, a bottle pourer, oh. and I had Guinness and Jameson at the same time. I drilled dumped. holes into the pumpkin, <laughs> poured Jameson in some, Guinness in some. <laughs> Shook the, the, shit the out of it. pumpkin up, <laughs> turned it over, and used the, the the bottle pourer and poured out the pumpkin chunks. <laughs> Janice and Guinnesson, or Guinness and Jameson. That is the quickest I've ever seen somebody throw up from drinking something. <laughs> yep. Oh, then you haven't seen me drink Schlieb of it. <laughs> it was <sighs> instantaneous. <laughs> yep. That was it's, that it's was really rough. Su- it's really surprising. I would think the pumpkin would really bring out the flavor and the liquor. Well, it was the chunks. That <laughs> yeah, it, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the pumpkin innards <laughs> definitely <laughs> made that rough. I hope you answered your question, Sonny D. There you go. There you go, Doug. All right. The uh, first uh, listener feedback from Kevin at Cincy Explorer. I didn't even know what Washington D.C. I didn't even okay do the wah wah sound effect. Wah wah. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> I didn't even know that Washington D.C. had an XFL team until Hobie tweeted about it. Fuck yeah! Are there Hobie's any on top of things. Semi-professional or professional sports leagues or sports teams that you didn't know existed in your hometown? Rugby. We have a semi-professional rugby team in Cincinnati. Yeah. Did not know that. Mm-hmm. No, I knew that because they drink at Haps after all their matches. Oh. The only reason yes, I knew they that do. is because somebody played on it. Oh, yeah. I guess that would have helped. They have a couple of teams, but it was yeah. the Cincinnati Celts. Mm-hmm. One. I did not know that, though. Jeff, anything for you, Scab? I didn't know that any of the... I Today I learned that those <laughs> that you just said existed. <laughs> Um, but would you want your tour guide in your city mm-hmm. not to know that they had these semi-professional teams that yeah, you might want to go right, watch? Yeah, that's right, Kevin. Come on. Isn't that the Cincy Explorer responsibility? In, well, <laughs> Cincy Explorer is now DC Explorer. Currently living in DC. Has yes. he changed his, his handle? handle yeah, and you has, haven't changed it? Yeah, or, I mean, and the intern has uh, I guess the yet? intern has not changed it. Uh, let me fact check that. Good job, Brian. You know, we have an application for a new intern. We do. We do. Um, intern, anybody... intern fax machine has let us down recently. Yeah. If, hey, if you'd like to be an intern, uh, uh, go ahead and send us a resume at Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter, because that's where you get all your good jobs from. Yeah. Uh, that and Craigslist. So to be I mean, fair. I mean, Jason and I did do an interview we uh, did. this week, but we are concerned about labor laws. Yeah. Je- Jeannie's daughter uh, is uh, not interested, but we're trying to make her interested in, as an intern. <laughs> um <laughs> So we'll see. By, by we interviewed her, it means you berated her to yes. take the position? Yes. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so Kevin's uh, handle is no longer Cincy Explorer. Oh, what is it? It's just his name, Kevin Brigger. Oh, okay. At Kevin Brigger. Okay. So all this time, I feel like... It... God damn it, fax machine. Damn it. You're I'm fired. Off- Scab, off- you want to be an intern here? I'm going to office space that yeah. thing. <laughs> Sounds like too much work. Uh, we pay you. Brian's in charge of the fees over here. What do we pay? IOUs. Oh. What Jeff said. There you go. Uh, what else you got, Blake? Uh, yeah, from uh, B-Rad of the Cinema Guys. Since I was nominated but lost, the Canadian of the Year floppy, what advice does Scab Jeff for coping with losing so many floppy nominations? What advice, what he, advice he has for him. Yeah. yeah. How should he handle his loss? Well, I too have lost Canadian of the Year, and that's that's the hardest. That's the that's definitely the hardest one to lose. But really, when you're alone, you can cry, and nobody judges you for it. <laughs> so if you do that a lot, it kind of gets it all all out, and then you can kind of pretend that life's okay. For does it make you feel better that your wife has won two uh, two of them? It, it does not. Oh, and she's won two Oscar trophies too. Wow. And, we got two over there. And you guys have won. I've never won an Oscar trophy. 
There's two over there. Have, well, have, you, have you started cutting yourself, anybody. Jeff? What? Have you started cutting yourself because of all this stuff that's been building up? Yeah. <laughs> it's, Acc- it's accidental. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was making dinner, but... <laughs> no, I have cats. <laughs> well, all his grief has been causing him to go bald. That's why he's wearing a hat in the studio. Jeff. No, I have a full head of... Oh, wait. No, I don't. <laughs> I forgot Scab, my toupee. Blink twice if you're okay. Damn it. <laughs> no blinks at all. Damn it. He is staring daggers at you. <laughs> <laughs> What else it, we got? It, it is really brutal to lose them, though. So. Especially when you don't vote for yourself. Uh, well, can you really say you lost it if you never had it to begin with? Or had a chance. Oh, he, he had a chance. He had <laughs> plenty of chances. It's true. It's true. I nominate him every year. Being nominated. Did it feel <laughs> bad that your book, Titanic, the true story, Zombies, the true story of the Titanic, uh, lost in the category about... Uh, the floppy for the tight uh, book about zombies on a ship to Gotham. Did that uh, feel bad? I'm okay with with okay literary criticism. Okay, okay. <laughs> Gotham was a good 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 movie TV show. Uh, I think it might still hold the record for most floppies won. Gotham. Yep, it's up there. Well, yeah. Jeff Jeff holds the most the record for most floppies lost. He's a Susan Lucci of Hobie, mm-hmm. so that's good. Oh, she eventually won one. She got her daytime Emmy. So well, when we're going to end our series, well, our show, well, you he know, may win. If we're still going and we can award it to you posthumous, <laughs> <laughs> he still would lose out. <laughs> uh, well, I could get the the stupidest death one. Oh, <laughs> oh I like Worsley, it. he's going to get a Worsley oh, award. Worsley. <laughs> well, we did buy a new mixer. I guess we're going to be doing this for another four hundred and eighty episodes. <laughs> we're going to a thousand at least. So yeah. we, we had this. Uh, question uh, a couple weeks ago what would you want your last words to be especially if you're going to win a worsley <laughs> oh that makes it even better <laughs> when you're adding the worsley part to it i i have nothing prepared for that <laughs> think about that like like think about hold that. my beer no, uh, no. That, that was his answer i have nothing prepared for that <laughs> <laughs> i was not prepared for this <laughs> Was yeah. not prepared <laughs> one bit <laughs> or for the floppy. <laughs> All right, so uh, moving on to listener reviews, we got uh, Kevin at uh, Nepo Brigger <laughs> watched Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania. He's, he's going to give a review. He's not okay. going to steal one of my reviews that I did, you know, several episodes ago. Because I haven't watched this yet. I haven't either. So it's an original one. Yeah. He's not regurgitating things that he heard from me on the podcast. That is true. Jim and I talked about it. And we'll say it's better than the critics' ratings. Oh, yeah, because almost everything is. Yeah, if you go into the film thinking that this is MCU's Star Wars-style film, then you'll enjoy the movie more. One massive hate. Mo Doc. That character sucked. It did. And you like Modoc? I don't like. I I don't particularly care for Modoc to begin with, oh. but the way they put Modoc in this film and the story, the the way they mm-hmm. wrote him, it was terrible. Spoilers. I'm not spoiling how it's <laughs> terrible. You'll have to find that out for yourself. It's on the poster. <laughs> Modoc's terrible. Find out for yourself. <laughs> 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 oh, Jeff, Damn Jeff it, I, I have to watch this now. <laughs> I, I would say, as a person that's never read the comics, etc., but just watches the movies, I will have to say that the picture of Modoc that I had seen does make me go, "What the fuck?" Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. Yeah, uh, you say, "What the fuck?" When you see Modoc the yeah. first time you ever see him, everyone in both right? the comics and in the movie. <laughs> you know, the, every every the, the movie does an accurate portrayal of what he looks like. Every picture I see online is the Michael Jordan crying as Modoc. I don't see the real one yet. Is Jordan in it? Michael B. Jordan? No. Damn Michael it. Jordan. <laughs> spoiler, yeah, he's got spoiler Jason. Out. Sorry. My bad. My bad. That's what I see online, and it's never wrong. Yeah, the internet never lies. No. No. Brian, endangered species, alien. Fake ones. Fake endangered. But it's killing them. But Good. They deserve to die. Wow. Wow. Well, I have no problem if your species is as dumb as that species was, it should die out. 
Jim, I'd like to see a crossover. A Grogu eats an alien egg and then it bursts out of his chest. <laughs> That's how Grogu dies. Jim, that's somebody's CGI family there. You be nice to them. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I have golf season coming up. I have need to say enough stuff to get me suspended. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Are you in the Live Tour or whatever that is now? L5, V9, I, I jo- 10? I joined the Live Tour. They agreed to pay me uh, $200,000, mm-hmm. and then somebody else joined, and I got cut and never saw a dime. Oh, oh damn it. And then they bought the WWE. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a future as a wrestler now. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Was that, uh, what's your name, Greska's husband? He made the cut, cut you out? <laughs> Dustin Johnson made it ahead of me. That's right. Made it ahead of you, and he's got Paulina. Uh-huh. Is Greg Norman still in charge over there? Of course. Oh, okay. I have no idea. He was. To tell you the truth. But then he almost punched somebody, so I don't know. I don't watch golf. So, uh, According to uh, the ratings, nobody's watching the live golf either on CW Network. <laughs> it's on syndication on Saturdays and Sundays on CW, and they're like, well, we're happy with the ratings, and they're like, but the ratings are horrible. It's like, well, it's on CW on a Saturday and Sunday. Like, <laughs> what do you expect? Yeah, what do you expect? <laughs> They've had a tournament on the CW? Yeah, last week. Oh. Uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, well, sorry, the the so, group from Saudi Arabia yeah. that owns it, uh, they're paying CW to uh, uh, broadcast it. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> They maybe have they, to. I mean, nobody they, else wanted them. Maybe they get Ronaldo to uh, <laughs> golf out there while he's there, too. Because they were, what, on, what, just YouTube, YouTube. last yeah. year? Yeah. And I get it. I mean, they got to make inroads somehow, right? Yeah. I watched it on YouTube last year. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Blake. Uh, well. So we're, let's wrap it up here. Uh, actually, Especially, real quick. Oh, number I have. One, but hold on a second. We have more we have listener feedback w- a, here from a Brian. last entry. He's got something to add. Uh, Dr. Dana wanted to know why is it that every week you are trying to give away her job at the comic expo who am i trying to do that to you keep telling people that they can do run the line oh no 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 dr dana's in charge of that well you need to stop telling people they can do it then they can volunteer and help us but dr dana's in charge of the line i well, apologize do- well, dr dana is actually you know missing out because she needs to be in top physical condition mm-hmm. to run that line yeah. Against those thousands of unruly fans. And she hasn't been going to the gym lately. She's only been running 17 she, miles? She's, only, she's, she's getting uh, a lot of cardio in. Mm. Uh, not doing a, t- a ton of weight training right now. To be right. fair, you probably need more cardio for the expo yeah. than you do yeah. weight training. Well, it yeah. depends. I don't know. There's a lot of big fat guys who come in there and try and cut in line. That's true. And Dana, Dr. Dana doesn't What's take... What's wrong with me trying to cut in line? Yeah. You wait your turn, Jeff! <laughs> Hold on. She may be able to get there first, but she has to hold him back. Uh-huh. That's, that's, that's a requirement. She, she beats him to the front of the line easily because they're winded yeah. after eight steps. Yeah, exactly. Leave Jeff alone! <laughs> Jeff, Jeff's good for 12 steps. Sorry. I am? Oh, the 12-step program you joined last week. <laughs> I can't join a 12-step program. I don't believe in step two. What's step two? The belief in a higher power. Oh, okay. Well, down the hall, that's on our next podcast <laughs> uh, on the Hobie Network sermon. Uh, check it out. Um, when is Kenneth Copeland's uh, podcast oh. dropping on that network? <laughs> <sighs> next week. We'll get next week. Can't get next wait. Week. He's got to fly his private plane here. Yeah. Uh, Blake, what else you got? I can just picture Kenneth Copeland showing up at Jason's house to film on the tape a podcast. And Jason just like, uh, <laughs> give, me the, give me the hose. <laughs> Let's see if we can make this happen, Brian. Just blow him away if he comes in. <sighs> he blew COVID away. <laughs> He blew it away. He, 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 was, pretty, he was pretty successful. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Kenneth. Moving on. What do we got left, Blake? You can blow away all the negative reviews. <laughs> They're eating. Professor number one and doctor number one says better performance by Mr. T. Rocky three or WrestleMania. Oon. What do you think? Rocky three. Oh. Uh, Saturday Night Live. The 18th. When he played the uh, neighbor in Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood. Oh, that's a good one. Wasn't he in a cartoon? Mr. T. Or DC Cab. DC Cab. That's a good one. Uh, So between these two uh, (laughs) examples that we were given, I'm going to say Rocky Three. Hey, I'm answering the question as it's written. (laughs) 
Jeff. I'm answering the question the Hobie way. <laughs> do you have some news of the geek for us? Well, I think you did. prepared. Thanks for... Well, you know, you got to always be prepared on that board you over there. answering a question. I put a piece of chocolate in my mouth, and then you threw it at me. Is he, Mr. T the one who pities he, the fool? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. How he could he, pities the fool. How could he throw a piece of chocolate at you that's in your mouth? He threw the uh, lead at me. Oh, okay. I'm I sorry. Thought, I wanted Jeff to do I, his job, Brian. That was my bad. I, I thought he, <laughs> my bad. I thought he we meant... were talking. You interrupted the discussion we were having to do. This that. is a horrible discussion. That's this podcast. <laughs> We've done this nine years, four hundred and eighty-two <laughs> times, <sighs> and it hasn't gotten any better. It's not gotten worse though. So that's a positive. <laughs> Because that's not possible. The ratings have improved. <laughs> Which boggles we're, my mind. Thank you for listening. We're the live golf of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm not that bad. We're not paying people to listen, are we? We're not no, the we're not cinema not. guys. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we Wait show up. <laughs> Jim made the cut for this podcast. <laughs> I tried to get Pauline and Kretzky, but she said fuck off. <laughs> See, <laughs> Since Jason made me switch over to the uh, different sound effects, I wasn't able to get any rim shots or sand trombones in there. <laughs> You're awful at that. I, ne- I need to remap this whole thing for next week. Like the whole podcast. <laughs> well, sorry, sorry, Jason, you're out. <laughs> you all made the you all made podcast supper. You, you, and you, and you, 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 and you, and you. You're cut. Yeah. You're cut. I think it's just Jeff. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're, you're cool. And fuck you. I'm out. Uh, I'll be over next week. But it's only you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're kicking you out of the podcast, Jason, and huh. your wife is still letting us use the. She probably would. Oh, oh yeah, she student. would. If Jeff asked. Yeah, she would. Ah, if you asked, probably so, too. Oh, well, because I have to come over. I have to do uh, the chores. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Get, and get my allowance. Yeah, you do. You're the one that brought the stuff down the stairs, so we appreciate <laughs> that. My own son won't, but, you know, you will. Uh, let's get some news of the geek here. That didn't work. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Are we still recording? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 482 times. Good, edit that out. Why do that? We have the ability to do that now. (laughs) Hit the music! (laughs) It's time for another installment of the News of the Geek. Fuck the intern position. We might need a new mixer over there, guy. Jeez. Wait, wait. We're still we're still taping? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it just keeps going. We got music on here. It's still red. <laughs> is it red? It is. Is it red? The recording is Brian, red. it's red. It's red? Yeah, we're recording. Did you save it, Jeff? Well, not while we're recording. We got to stop before I save it. Oh, okay. Well, that's not a... Doesn't red mean muted? Didn't we determine that earlier? Oh, jeez. That was a different red. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a few... Press the pretty button. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Look at the pretty one. Anyways, uh, News of the Geek this week is a special Oscar uh, nomination geek. So here we go. Jeff, are you ready? I've seen all these but one. Okay, here we go. Best and we're not going through all of them, but we'll give you, I think, 11. We usually do 11. Okay. Because I don't like even numbers. Best animated film, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. <laughs> I'm definitely going to pick that one. That, that one's the one that's a runaway. Let me get through the list, Jeff. God. Marcel the Shell with shoes on. Worst title ever. It's Jeff, it's where's the mute good. button? <laughs> Is it about a turtle? No, no. no, no. It's, it's, uh, it's about... Uh, it's a shell. It's a, a conch shell. shell. Or, uh, yeah. No. But, uh, yeah. Anyways. But it's real good. But it's got shoes on. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. I hated that. I liked that movie. I love that. I liked it a lot. The Sea Beast. Uh, That wasn't bad. Turning Red. That wasn't bad. I haven't seen any of it. I've seen Puss in Boots and Turning Red, and I still think Turning Red might be the fourth best on this list. Uh, I think Marcel the Shell was probably my favorite, but Mm. Pinocchio was probably the best. You're going with Pinocchio? going to win, yes. Okay. Is it creepy like every other Pinocchio adaptation? Oh, it's way creepy. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> you saw I, it, Jim? Yes. Yeah. I saw the first third of Turning Red mm-hmm. and couldn't watch it anymore. It wasn't horrible. Yes, I was just kind of bored. It was. Oh, wow. Well, I don't think well, you were the demographic. Yeah, I'm not the target audience, <laughs> but 
if I had an Oscar vote, it wouldn't be for that. Okay. So uh, where's Marcel the Shell? Is that streaming anywhere? Uh, I believe it's on Amazon Prime. Okay. And it may be streaming for free. Amazon Prime has a lot but of shows up here. But it's possible we had to, to pay for it. Um, best visual effects. All Quiet on the Western Front. Oh, we talked about that already. Avatar, colon, the way of shit. Stop watching Avatar. The Batman. I am the Batman. Black Panther, colon, Wakanda Forever. And Top Gun, colon, Maverick. This one could go to Top Gun mm-hmm. or Avatar, but I'm going to go Avatar. I think they want to throw Cameron one, and I think this is where they'll do it. Okay. I'm going to go. Uh, so you're going, you're going Avatar? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go Top Gun on this one. Uh, I'll say the Batman. The Batman. It's too dark. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, gonna... I think Hollywood's getting sick of the superhero thing, or at least the Oscar mm-hmm. Hollywood is getting sick of the superhero things. I'm not going to give it to Black Panther for actress, but I don't think any other superhero. I'm wins. not going to give him my votes because I don't want to spoil them and have Jeff steal them for his, so he can win the uh, Oscar Sunday. trophy at his party. Uh, best documentary feature film: All That Breathes. Breathes. Uh, all it's the be- being Navalny. You probably don't need to read through them. They mm-hmm. all uh, that beauty, all the beauty and bloodshed, fire of love, a house made of splinters. That would be painful. A house made of splinters is probably the best of them, and that's the longest shot. And Navalny, Navalny. There you go. And it's about uh, the Russian guy who was running against Putin, mm-hmm. and then Putin tried to kill him, and then he was trying to go back into the country, but he was a Nazi. Like, literally, <laughs> he was a Nazi, and they just kind of throw that out there, like, yeah, I'm, there's good people on both sides type of thing, but you he was Putin literally speaking and a Nazi. to skinheads who were doing the big <laughs> hail thing, and, like, up there, and he kind of did it, and then his his advisor was like, you yeah, probably shouldn't do that. I'm like, wait a second. So this guy <laughs> who we've been kind of rooting for this whole time is a full-fledged Nazi? <laughs> that was a twist. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. I didn't. I you was know, not prepared for this. <laughs> you know it's bad when you're rooting for the Nazi over Putin. <laughs> or are you? No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who you'd root for in that situation. Third party. Vote third party, Jim. I just thrown your vote away. <laughs> I voted for Kodos. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me. Uh, so which one did you pick? I'm sorry. Navalny. Uh, Navalny's Navalny. going to win. Okay. It's not the best, though. Uh, best original screenplay. The Banshees of Inch <laughs> Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. The Fablemans, fuck that film. Tar and Triangle of Sadness. Have you seen the Fablemans, Jason? No, I've seen the previews. That's all I need. Uh, I think everything, <laughs> everywhere, all at once is going to win, and and it either deserves it or Banshees deserves it. Those two were were both very well written. Uh, best adapted screenplay: All Quiet on the Western Front. That was a book. Uh, Glass Onion: Colon and Knives Out mystery. Living. Top Gun, Colin Maverick, and Women Talking. Uh, I'm going to say All Quiet on the Western Front. Women Talking is favored by far, but that was uh, painful. That was one of the one of the twenty Rough bad ones. ones. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh wow! So I guess just because it's a character from another movie, it's adapted. Mm-hmm. Really? Wow! That I'm like that was an original script. What do you? Which one? Glass Not, Onion. Uh, Glass Onion. Oh. Hmm. I'm like that. That that was original script. What the, is it? Because the m- character was in a different movie. I, I yeah. I think like if you put Sherlock Holmes in something, even if it's completely original, I think it would still be adapted because you took a character. So pretty much any sequel is a adapted adapted screenplay. If it has the characters in, I guess. Uh, I think I think so. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. That's why Scream Six is up for best adapted screenplay this year. Uh, Angela, uh, best supporting actress. It wasn't even out yet. <laughs> I know. Uh, hey, it comes out Thursday. It beats the deadline, right? The deadline is <laughs> December 31st. I oh, don't know. Oh, I like this new rule. Uh, best supporting actress, Angela Bassett. You can just stop there, right? Black Panther. I think they're going to give it to her. Even though she was hardly in it and she wasn't that memorable. Uh, Hong Chao for The Whale. Uh, Carrie Pretty Condon well. for the Banshees of Insurance. Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis for Halloween and no, that's everything, everywhere, all at once. Whatever. Stephanie, who's Sue? Who is it? Who? Sue. Sue. 
Everything, everywhere, all I want. Who's winning this? Angela? I think Angela, and none of them were really of any note. Like, like stand out. You mean like they're... Supporting characters? Supporting role? Well, but still, even the... I think maybe the best performance in the in the history of film was a supporting actress in the Precious movie. Or, I, mm-hmm. But that was a supporting actress. But these are all, like, just... Based on the, on the novel Push by Sapphire? Yes. I was trying to come up with that. I couldn't <laughs> do it. <laughs> uh, best supporting actor, you have Brandon uh, Gleason from the ban- Banshees no, of... Brendan. Brendan, Br- sorry. Gleason. I think Short Round's going to win it. Uh, Brian Tyree Henry from Causeway, Judge Hirsch from the fucking Fablemans, Barry Keegan. Did you say Judge Hirsch? <laughs> Judge Hirsch. <laughs> Judge Hirsch. <laughs> I can't believe you're like all angry at Judd Hirsch. I thought he was one of your favorites. Court is in session. <laughs> uh, and Kay Who Kay Who Kwan from Everything All at Once. Short round. Short round. Okay. Uh, that's K. That, that oh, is K. Who won the one of them from the was the Gleason one one of the yeah uh, Gleason yeah he could win but I think they're gonna give it to short round he was pretty good in Banshees I enjoyed that film I I, I enjoyed it a lot was Barry but Keegan more, okay yeah but Who's more or less than Temple Gleason? of Doom <laughs> <laughs> but Brendan Gleason was in uh, what Troy. Yep. <laughs> he was in Troy. <laughs> Brandon Gleason was in a lot of things. Do we want to start listing them? Brandon, Brad Pitt was in Troy. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming to Sinside Comic Expo. <laughs> no, he's not. Second, Troy, well, Brandon Gleason was in Jeff's favorite movie he's never seen, Braveheart. Oh, you never saw Braveheart? I've never seen Braveheart. Oh, shocking. Was he the one in 12 Monkeys that spread the virus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, was he the... I don't know. It's only we have. Allegedly. I don't think it is, but allegedly, it, <laughs> it was close it's enough. Been, it, it's been a while since I've seen that, and now I'm trying to remember. No, it was somebody who looked like him. It wasn't him. Okay, that spread the virus. Uh, he was really good here. in Gangs of New York. <laughs> he was. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the Brandon Gleason. He, he was good in Cold Mountain. Oh, oh yeah. Best is he in the Banshees of in Sharon? Sharon? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, he might have been. It, well, because it says it right here. <laughs> <laughs> he was in In Bruges. Ah, oh, yeah, that was a good one. I like that movie. Best he lead. was in the new Star Wars uh, sequels. No, that's oh, wait, song. that was his son. <laughs> Sorry. Jackie? Yes. <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> Best lead actress. Kate Blanchett for Tar. Anna Day Armis for Blonde. Uh, Andrea Risenborough for Two Leslie. No Anna in there. Is it now? Michelle Williams, the fucking Fablemans. Michelle Yo for everything, everywhere, all at once. Kate I'm, Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. Michelle Yo. Michelle Yo is going to win, but I'm going to say oh. Kate Blanchett. You're going to say Kate Blanchett because okay. she deserves it. Because without her, it wouldn't have been okay. as perfect a movie as it was. We got three left here. So are are you upset with everybody else that Andrea Riseborough got nominated? Uh, who's uh, Two, what, Le- Two, Leslie. Two Leslie? No, she was she was probably the best job. She probably did it. besides Kate Blanchett. She probably did the best job out of huh. anybody. People, like it, were, was, it was a brutal. It's just another white woman getting a, a nominated. Uh, <laughs> uh, best lead actor: Austin Butler for Elvis. Thank you, thank you very much. Colin Farrell for the for the Banshees of Inchnar. He was in Bruges. <laughs> Brandon Fraser. <laughs> he for, was. He was in the Batman. <laughs> was he in the phone? That phone booth movie. Remember that one? Yeah. Was that, what was that called? The phone, phone? Uh, phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was in. Uh, I think he was in Daredevil. Oh, was God. he the? Was he the gladiator in Gladiator? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but he had the same. You accent, ruined right? it. <laughs> not. Not really. No. <laughs> he was really good in SWAT too. Oh yeah. I no remember. one was good in SWAT. I. Disagree. What about, I agree with you. What Brian? about Alexander? Like <laughs> he was <laughs> great in Alexander. <laughs> SWAT was was very well done. It's a very fun film. It was, sure it, was was he better in SWAT or WrestleMania one? <laughs> Rock, he was better in Rocky Three. Actually, <laughs> actually it, now that I think about it, probably DC Cab. <laughs> Uh, Brandon Fraser is going to win. Brandon Fraser for the Mummy. Uh, Paul Meski or for the Whale. Sun. Bill Nye, the say science guy Paul for living. Paul Meski. Yeah. 
His Paul Mezcal. Oh, that was close enough. Mezcal. There's no I in there. And it's Bill Nighy. Like it's Bill Nighy in Living. Oh. But Brendan Fraser really did a phenomenal job. Like it hurt to watch that. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, best best director. Uh, Martin uh, McDonough. For the no. Banshee, of- <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting. To oh hear my this God! One. I'm just waiting. Banshee, <laughs> Mc- <McDonough? laughs> Daniel Kwan, Daniel Scheinart for everything, everywhere, all at once. That's not fair. It took two guys to do one person's <laughs> job. <laughs> uh, fuck Spielberg uh, for the Fablemans. Todd Field for Tar and Ruben Osterlund for a Triangle of my Sadness. My God, man, <laughs> Osterlund. <laughs> Ostland. Ostland. Yeah, you, I said. you threw an A in the middle. Ostland. No, I don't think you I did. added a syllable. <laughs> if only we had a mixer, we could go back. Nope. Too late. It's not too late, actually. <laughs> oh, no, no. We're keeping it in, though. Uh, who wins? Do you want me to edit that out? Well, Jason by far, up. the one who deserves to win is Todd Field, but he's not going to. Uh, it's going to be Spielberg, isn't it? I'm thinking it will be. I'm going to say Spielberg. Time to get up. Uh, even though the everything everywhere all at once is favored at this time, they're trending down, and you know, I think they'll just. Hand here's it your effect on me, Scab. Over the years, uh, I was have like, you, "Have you watched the Spielberg film and seen how bad it is? Not not the action ones. The action ones, he knows what he's doing. It, but when it, he tries to do drama, when I watch the, when they come on TV, and I'm like." Fucking Spielberg. You have gotten into my psyche now that I just hate this man, and I don't know why. <laughs> so was War of Worlds supposed to be drama? Because that was terrible. That was terrible. Have... I think it probably was. Okay. Jason, <sighs> Jason, there is an option on your phone mm-hmm. where you can turn the alarm off. Yeah. yeah. Or even mute it. Or yeah. mute it. Or you can just go off every episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, is there a question in there? No. Okay, just I said it. there is an option. <laughs> oh, okay. He's saying you don't want to hear your phone go off every week. <laughs> but then how will the listener know what time it is in our world as compared to what time it is in 929. <laughs> Do you know where your children are? Uh, let's see here. Oscar. It's not 929. It is. It is. It is. is it really? Yeah. Holy crap. Uh, Oscar nominations, Best Picture, All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of the Water, The Banshees of Insurance, Elvis, thank you very much, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, Fucking Fablemans, Tar, <laughs> Top Gun, Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. Who are we going with? Women Talking? Um, oh, that was awful. I'm going to go with uh, Everything, <laughs> Everywhere, All at Once. Okay. Even though it doesn't deserve it, Tar deserves it by far. Okay. Those are your picks. I'm going to pick Triangle of Sadness just because it's the best title. <laughs> are you coming back next week for this? I, I would love to. There you go. You'll be back next week. See how many right or wrong. I think you had 83% last year. So let's see what happens there. And he still didn't win the best uh, Oscar. Who won that last year? I did. Oh, that's right. <laughs> They're over there next to the your floppies. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jeff, get ready. Let's get some plot lines going. Wow. It's time to grab your balls of fury. It's plot lines. Oh, it's like he was prepared Jeff, for that. Jason. <laughs> and Jim and Brian and Blake and Scab. This week. Well, Jeff, tell us what plot lines is. Plot lines is when someone, uh, any listener, can go ahead and send a uh, title of a movie over to us, and we will either separately or together try to come up with a plot line based only on the title and year of release. Send those into at Bad Ideas Podcast, and uh, then we'll even try to maybe even guess an actor or two that were in it. Yes. We've never seen this one, The Boxer's Omen. Is that correct? Never ni- seen it. 1983, Boxer's Omen. I am unaware of this film. And I didn't even look it up. Was this on Do the- not look it up. <laughs> I didn't. Was That's this the on, the, t- on the, the, outline, the outline, outline that you sent me? Yes. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> did you look it up? I did not. Okay. I, I, I didn't know that it... That is the rule. We were doing this until this moment. The pl- it, it kind of blends in. Uh, the Boxer's Omen. Who would like to go first? Anybody? It's a sports movie. Okay. About boxing. Okay. And uh, the boxer, I don't know, he's got some sort of disease. Okay. Yep, that's it. 
And yeah, exactly. There's, there's, he, it's an omen, and, and and so not only is he fighting in the ring, but he's fighting for his life from whatever disease it is. Uh, lupus. It's always it's, lupus. It's probably lupus. Yes, it's always lupus. Who's it star? Uh, let's see, 1983. It probably stars mm-hmm. Peter Scolari. Ooh. <laughs> Was not not fame. who I would pick as a boxer. <laughs> I didn't say he was the boxer. But it's crazy <laughs> enough to work. So I'm going to... This is the sequel to The Omen. Uh, Damien is now a trying to find out what to do on his life. I'll let you know the sequel to The Omen is The Omen, omen two. 2. This is the third Omen. That's, That's the, the omen. final conflict. <laughs> this is the fourth Omen. This is where Air Bud gets into The Omen. Because it's a boxer <laughs> dog instead of uh, whatever kind of dog Air Bud was. And he's got like a The Omen symbol oh. printed on his fur. Oh, I'm going with it. I'm with you on this. And, I like and it. He's, and he's going around cursing people as he goes around. and they all. But he's a boxer. He's a boxer dog. Yeah, the dog, the breed the dog. dog. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Not, not with the gloves. Oh, I, see, I'm going, <laughs> I know what you were picturing. I'm going the opposite one. way. So I'm going with a boxer dog. That's actually a boxer, and he's gone up through the minor leagues of like cat fighting, and then so we've just left the open completely behind. <laughs> well, you know, that's we yours. Just, we just jumped on the dog thing. <laughs> well, that's yours. Yours is cursing. I'm a boxer. My boxer is a boxer, and he has the big fight against a. Doberman named Damien. Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> I'm, I'm confident that Jeff's is closer than Jason's. Is. Nope, nope, mine's correct. Uh, mine's Jeff's. <laughs> both, both. Everybody named Jeff. Uh, mine stars uh, Bob Newhart and Robert Redford. Okay, who is your star? Uh, Benji. <laughs> <laughs> And Rin Tin Tin? Is that a, is I that think a it was dog? Dead. I, yeah, he was probably dead by 83, but sure, why not? Okay. Okay, mine, it's, again, it is about an actual, it's about a boxer, because it'd be stupid to not oh, of be about a boxer. And it's just him finding his way and then getting the sign that it's time to quit. Because, again, he probably has some brain damage and everything. And it stars Eric Roberts. Ooh, Ooh, I like it. You're right. It does start. I'm sure now that it stars Eric Roberts. It, that sounds kind of like the wrestler. But, but yes, I'm, yes. So it's pretty much the wrestler just ripped it off. But I'm thinking I want to change mine a, now because I'm thinking more like reboot. Hellraiser. He he has the box, so somebody's got to make the box. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's a box dog. It's yeah, a it's person a, who makes guy. boxes, and it's Donald Sutherland. Oh, okay, Brian. Do you have a? I looked it up. Oh, because <laughs> of the dogs and fighting cats and the, that bullshit. I had to look it Blake, up. Blake, do so. you have a guess? Uh, no, but I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> no, a young a young Jeff Bezos works as a warehouse employee, boxing up. Uh, items for shipment out for Books. Blockbuster to their stores, and he realizes that one day, as he's loading up a box, he's looking at a red box and says, "You know, one day." That was it. <laughs> dot, one dot, day. Dot, dot, one dot. day. Who plays Jeff Bezos? Uh, Stanley Tucci. Sta- <laughs> a young Stanley. Tucci. A young Stanley Tucci with a hair wig. <laughs> I like it. Was he bald in 1983? Stanley Tucci. Yeah. Jeff Bezos. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Jeff, or Brian, since you looked it up, cheater, what is it? While in Thailand to avenge his brother, who was crippled in a fight with a corrupt Thai fighter, a, <laughs> Thai fighter. <laughs> a man gets caught up in a web of fate, black magic, and Buddhism. So this when is he made the box, when he made the box, it's exactly kickboxer. <laughs> this is literally <laughs> kickboxer. <laughs> it's a horror. Co- uh, was Jean Claude Van Damme in it? it? He was not. <laughs> it, it is a horror film from Hong Kong. So this is before kickboxer. So kickboxer stole from this. Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, F- Philip Ko. Mm. Xiao Yin Lin. Yep. I I knew it. I damn it. Car Man Y. <laughs> Lung Wei Wang and Donald Sutherland and Eric Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> they they were the executive producers. <laughs> so to make a long story short, too late. Scab Jeff was right. Good job. Scab. He was technically the closest. <laughs> <laughs> 
If you got yeah. plot lines for plot lines for us next week, send it to us. More obscure the best. Uh, it was Thailand where he bought the box in Hellraiser, right? <laughs> and it was a sto- it was a horror movie. Uh huh. Jeff he, again. He he is our uh, film expert. <laughs> Are you ready, Jeff, for box office news? I hit the wrong button. Again. That's not the right button, you guy. <laughs> it's time. Box office bombs. <laughs> oh. I'll, I'll get used to this sometime. It's a big button. <laughs> I, I need to remind. Well, it's not the problems. I got the buttons over here, but I got the touch screen over here, and I'm hitting the touch screen when I should be hitting the buttons. <sighs> That's number one. I'll just have to redo this because I have to keep changing from screen to screen. So I got to figure out the ones I need more often and just put them all on once. Yeah. Uh, are we taping this? Yes, we are. It's thrilling. Oh. <laughs> it's thrilling, Jim. <laughs> So DC camp, huh? Four hundred and eighty. <laughs> <laughs> but first one with this. Yeah. Well, so box office news <laughs> from March third through March fifth of twenty twenty three. Number one, Creed three made fifty nine million dollars in its opening weekend on a seventy five million dollar budget. Do you like it? I haven't seen it yet. I haven't either. I was I'm going, going Thursday. Thursday. I miss Creed 2, but I like Creed 1. Creed 1's really good. Uh, yeah, they're both... Now, this is the third movie about Scott Stapp's band? Yes. Yes. Okay. No. <laughs> I pity the fool. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rocky 3, not uh-huh. Creed 3. Close. Tech, same franchise world, same universe. The Rocky universe. Yes. The so multiverse did, of Rocky Balboa. So they got Clubber Lang's kid to fight in the, this one, right? The RU, the Rocky Universe. Ru. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Not, not that I'm aware of. No. All right. So then number two this week, Ant-Man and the Wasp, colon, Quantumania, made $12.5 million, a total of $187 million, on a budget of $200 million. Okay. Everybody's favorite, number three, Cocaine Bear. Another $11 million for a total of $41.5 million on a budget of $30 million. Good for this. They were selling the real Cocaine Bear to Ripley's. Apparently, it's not too far from here. It's oh. taxidermy down in Kentucky somewhere. That doesn't surprise me. Which Ripley's are they going to put it at? It's got to be in Gatlinburg. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be. Yeah, right? I would hope so. But isn't there one uh, Ripley's like in uh, uh, South Carolina? What's their tour? Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach. There's one there, and there's one in Branson, Missouri. Oh, it's got to oh, be Gatlinburg. <laughs> has to be Gatlinburg. And we'll make sure to avoid that the next time. Yeah. Down there. <laughs> but if Cocaine Bear is in there, then we got to go see. I'll be like, hey, let's stay in a chalet and drink some beers. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> let's enjoy the beautiful, beautiful mountain view. Although they do have Trump stores. They've got a lot of Trump stores. Down the hall. Let's go. (laughs) There's Trump stores down the hall? Yeah. It's next to the Biden store, too. Uh Number four, we have Demon Slayer, colon, to the Swordsmith Village. It made $10 million in its opening weekend on an unknown budget. Hmm. Is that the Jesus movie that I keep hearing about? That's next. I think Uh, that'd be number five, Jesus Revolution. (laughs) Uh, it made eight point seven million, a total of thirty and a half million on an unknown budget. I, is that the Demon Slayer film I've been talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was Demon Slayer. Oh, okay. So, so, Jesus Revolution is that the anime film? Yes. Okay. No, it's the Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> is that the guy who was in the Passion of the Christ? It's a sequel, so it's adapted screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> they use Jesus in adapted screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on, upcoming March 10th, open of Scream VI. Yes. In the next installment, the survivors of the ghost face killings leave Woodsboro behind and start a fresh chapter in New York City. Got my ticket already. And it's not that fresh of a chapter. If it screams six. It's in New York. (laughs) It's a fresh chapter. Fresh. I got my ticket. I'm excited. Also, opening up this weekend, everyone be ready, 65. An astronaut crash lands on a mysterious planet 
only to discover he's not alone. Bum, bum, bum. Adam Driver is. Adam Driver fighting dinosaurs. It's on Earth, though. He went 65 million years in the past. It looks What? So he time traveled? He didn't just go on a f- alien plant? Are you? Did you ruin the end for everybody? Uh, is that the, the twist? It's in the trailer. Is it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yes, it was in the trailer, and it looks it looks, looks so bad. So I want to see this, and my oldest son has come up to me. He's like, Dad, you're really not going to go see this, are you? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, the trailer came on, like, that looks great. And it's like, no, no, it doesn't. And I I like Adam Driver. This looks amazing. No, it does not. What else we got? And also coming out, we have Champions. A former minor league basketball coach is ordered by the court to manage a team of players with intellectual disabilities. He soon realizes that despite his doubts, together, this team can go further than they ever imagined. Woody Harrelson, and it's the Farley films. Hmm. Um, what uh, is a minor league basketball really coach? Is? Was that? I guess that'd are be, you uh, joking or is it really Woody no, it's Harrelson true. It really and is. the Fairley brothers are directing? Yeah. yeah. I, I guess it would be like what a instructional or a, what NBA, uh, the D League. Yeah, yeah, the D League. Mm-hmm. The G League. Yeah, Gatorade well, well, League. It's based on the Spanish film Campeones. Campeones. <laughs> what does that mean in Spanish? Champions. Shrimp. Oh, <laughs> champignon. What's that mean? Mushrooms. <laughs> uh, there it you does. go. I thought it was champagne. Oh. We got a top five this week. We do. Top five is top five favorite Harrison Ford films. No, no, no. What is it, Jim? It is. Let me see how I worded it properly. Do do do. It is top five. Perfectly cast TV or movie roles. So, what TV character was? That wasn't movie? Even what he I didn't said see the he movie said it was roles. only TV. TV. Okay, well, who said? Oh, oh, well, I missed the TV part. What TV I character? Only TV. <laughs> what TV character was so perfectly played by their actor that nobody could replace them in said role? Oh no! Well, then my thing I is only all have TV. wrong. I only have TV. I, I only, only have only TV. TV. I think I, I only have one TV. After I worked several hours on the Harrison Ford top five. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I didn't get my lie. new top five until about an hour and a half ago, or I guess a little longer than that now. But <laughs> well, yeah, stop complaining, Jeff. Well, we'll start with uh, with our guest, Scab Jeff. Okay, my number five is The Count from Sesame Street. <laughs> I don't believe anyone else could play him as well. I, I might agree with you on that. My left hand can. Ooh. Okay, Blake, let's talk about somebody other than your left hand. Is that a sexual thing with the count from no, Sesame all Street? No, all he needs is a Muppet and a sock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, that didn't come out right either. <laughs> and I feel like made it worse. Right? <laughs> oh, man. Which Muppet are you most attracted to? <laughs> Miss Piggy, of course. No. Not Janice? Oh, Janice is the one. Wait, yeah, hold on. Let me change my answer. Nope, too late. <laughs> change okay. your per- Other than Janice, what's your <laughs> what's your number five, Blake? <laughs> All right, so yeah, TV. I only did the TV. I only did TV. I that's, that's fine. What I read. That's fine. I'll just have to. I've got two two yeah. TV on my list, so I'll have to make I, five I, five or mm-hmm. three more. And I have to be emotionally attached to the show because okay. or else you know you can replace anybody if you're not emotionally yep. attached. So I started off, and then also I realized I got a lot of recency bias. So Moya Rose from uh, Schitt's Creek, Catherine O'Hara. Oh. I loved her character in Schitt's Creek. She was was pretty good. Unique. Mm-hmm. Her accent, un, you know. Brian? Brian? Yeah. Um, Unimitable. That's the word I was looking for. I could do it. Jason. I Unimitable. Can you say that? And, and <laughs> yes, he can do Bra. it. He can't even say the word. <laughs> um, I'll Bebe. see. I'll start with, with my number, number five. five, and I will say Brian Cranston as Walter White. Ooh, good one. Because that's where his thumb stopped the scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> number five for you. Number five. I'm going to pick Jason's favorite actress. <laughs> I'm going to do Jennifer Aniston as Rachel Green. 
Yeah, I don't. They, they made like haircuts and stuff after her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the Rachel cut. Yeah, that's great. The only thing <laughs> probably closest to that would be Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. It's because they were sisters. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Not just a hat rack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, I, my top five was based on like if you took them out, either the show suffered when they did leave the show, or you just can't, you know, you just couldn't picture anyone that they tried to substitute in. It was just horrible. Would have been horrible. Uh, number five for me, I hobied it. The whole cast of Seinfeld, just top to bottom, every one of those guys played a perfect part. Well, hold on, there was an episode. The Where Bizarro they, Jerry, the Bizarro, which was hilarious, cast. but it still wasn't. So as good. you mean the whole cast? The whole yeah. cast, like even the people they recast. Yes, like the pa- the dad, both dads. Yep, yep. Because <laughs> the, 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 those the, guys were awful. I meant the main cast. Sorry, oh. those top four. I'm sorry, Jim. Because yeah. I I have I do have somebody from Seinfeld on my list as honorable mention. Okay, Wayne Knight. Oh, he's because <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. he's Newman. always Newman. Yep, Newman. 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 Yeah, as so. Jim was saying that when I was. Well, when I was making my original list, mm-hmm. it was uh, something. It's somebody who, when you see, that's who you think. That's who you th- you think of that character that they portrayed. Everything okay. else they do, you still think of that character. I agree. I can see that. Good. But uh, I- I'll go uh, number five. I'll say Nick Offerman. He's my number four. Ron Swanson. Yeah, he Ron was, Swanson. He was in my my honorable mention. Uh, number four for you. Uh, number four for me is uh, Nathan Fillion. Ah, you bastard! Okay, okay. What uh, as the hammer? No, no, not as the hammer. As the rookie? Not as the rookie. Oh. Uh, as uh, <laughs> Firefly ca- Castle? Oh, he was he was in Buffy, wasn't he? He was in Buffy <laughs> Castle. That isn't where I'm Castle. picking ca- <laughs> Castle. It's definitely Firefly. Oh, it's Malcolm. That's <laughs> that's half of my number one. Put it on the board. Well, also that and uh, from two guys, a girl, and a pizza. Good place. call, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> well, Ryan Reynolds was going to be on my list, but it was more of a movie, so now I got to take him off. Deadpool. Yes, <laughs> put it in Wrexham. <laughs> uh, I mean, oh, no, not, Green not, Lantern. Not Deadpool. No. Uh, oh, Deadpool from the uh, original. All Deadpool. Any version of Deadpool is Ryan Reynolds. You can't have Deadpool without Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, because that, that can't be my thing because it's TV, not movies. Yeah, because that first up. installment of Deadpool we got in oh, the, the X Men film. So the movie fantastic. was terrible. But Ryan Reynolds was great in it. He was. He was great as. Uh, Until they sewed his mouth shut. Yeah, he was great before he was Deadpool. <laughs> as Wade Wilson. Yeah. Uh, number four for me was Nick Offerman as Ron Swanson. Number four for me, I will go with. Brian Baumgartner, Kevin from The Office. Kevin Malone. Oh, that's a good one. That's good one. He's always going to be Kevin. Uh, Brian? Uh, number four for me, this is going to be uh, a Hobie, only because it's the entire cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, that's a good one. I just, now, is this the entire cast? Like, everybody the, from the main every cast. single the, episode? The five main characters. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I just can't imagine... Anybody else mm-hmm. being, yeah, anywhere Can't. close to pulling that show off the way that they do? You got my toe knife over there. Yeah, Frank Reynolds was on my list. Yeah, uh, Blake number four. Let's see, uh, number four kind of did it together, um, mostly because uh, Diego Luna and Andor. I mean, mm-hmm. Cassie and Andor. Yeah, you really can't do that without him. Mm-hmm. Correct. You can since he was in Rogue One. You kind of got to stick with him. Mm-hmm. But then I also hoped it because uh, I also like Luthen and you know Stellar Stellan Skarsgård does a very good job as Luthen as well. Yes, it's a good cast, mm-hmm. despite as he's saying it's not. Yeah, <laughs> number four for you. Jason's waving his fist at you, Izzy. Uh, I went with Alf from Alf. <laughs> <laughs> I could not see Alf yeah. with anybody other than Alf. Uh, yeah, if you saw him in another show, you'd think, oh, that's the guy who played Alf. Is that your number one Muppet? <laughs> that was uh, number one is uh, Lucy, Lucille Ball from I Love Lucy. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> my, number three. My number three is Animal from the Muppets. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, if, he was, if he were somewhere else, I... I Give I, me an impression of Animal. <laughs> see, he wouldn't be able to play animal. I that see. was terrible. Exactly. It's Jim, num- give me that animal. It's number two going to be the Swedish chef. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> they have a couple of Muppets there. Sandy Duncan from the Sandy Show or whatever that was. Sandy's family. 
No, Valerie Harper. Oh, Valerie Harper. That's right. Sandy was a replacement. Uh, number three for you, Blake. Yeah, he replaced. Gosh. <laughs> Blake, number three. Uh, Alan Alda is Hawkeye Pierce on. Mm, that is one. a good one. Good pick. Good one. Didn't think of it. Nice pick. Uh, number three for you, Brian. Uh, number three for me, James Gandolfini. Mm. He was Tony there. Soprano. Yep. <laughs> Honorable mention for me. Uh, number three for you, Jim? If he was a Muppet, he would have been hot. <laughs> <laughs> number three? Number three for me, Bob Denver. Gilligan. I'll erase that from my list. Wait, wait. <laughs> As or- Gilligan? Yeah, it says Gilgan. You can oh, yeah. keep it on my list. Then. You can keep it on your list. You can keep him on for Toby Gillis. Toby, uh, what's his name? Toby uh, Gillis. Yeah, Gil- the many Gillis. loves him. Toby Gillis. Toby Gillis. <laughs> uh, number three for me is uh, John Ratzenberger from Cliff Clavin and Cheers. Oh, good one. Love some Cliff Clavin. I thought about which one from Cheers that I want to put on there. It's either him or Norm. Yeah, it's both t- of them. I, put them. Put them together. George went to I hobie it. You can hobie it. Yeah. yeah. Well, my number three is Bob Denver from as Maynard G. Krabs ah, from the yeah. of Toby Gillis. <laughs> the original Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> That's who Shaggy is based off of. Yep. Number two? Uh, number two for me is uh, Gwendolyn Christie from Game of Thrones as Brienne of Tarth. Okay. Ooh. I They couldn't have found somebody to play that role better than she did. Uh, number two for me is Steve Carell from Michael Scott. From the office, why? Because even when they did replace him with the other characters, it was horrible. Um, and it, he just every time I see him, I just it jumped the shark when they replaced him. Yeah, uh, uh, no, it really went downhill after they killed off D'Angelo Vickers. They, <laughs> did they kill him off, or was he just paralyzed in a coma? I think well, when he, he tried to slam the ball, he went into a coma, and that's the last we heard of him. Oh, so okay. I it, think they it, killed it him. Really off. went downhill when Jim Carrey went back to the Finger Lakes. <laughs> <laughs> I get this time off. I plan to go to the Finger Lakes. <laughs> I uh, got to get back to the Finger Lakes. My family's waiting for me. Number two. Number two. I uh, hobied this one. It'll be Timothy Oliphant and Walton Goggins, both from Justified. The way those two played off each other was absolutely perfect in that show. I agree. Uh, number two for me will be Michael C. Hall. As Dexter. Oh. Uh, that, was, well, that was another one of one. my honorable mentions. If only he was a Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, and I and uh, he was in... Uh, the six kid. Feet Under? Yeah, Six Feet Under, but I was still... That's Dexter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Blake, your number two? So my number two is on, I was on the same wavelength as Jeff, except I went with uh, Peter Dinklage's uh, Tyrion Lannister in Game of Thrones. He's Both, not a Muppet. <laughs> yeah, I was about to make a size joke, but that's okay. No, seriously, oh, the other Jeff, the main character. Yeah, so a main character of an unusual stature, right? In order to pull that off, you know, you had to have a really good actor, and Peter Dinklage was that actor. I drink, and I know things. Number two for you, Scamp. Uh, my number two was the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> you need him for that show. Uh, <laughs> Pelosi could do Never mind. Uh, Down the hall. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> and like and your number one, Jeff. My number one was Tom Servo from MST. Ah! Ah! They've had three different people play Tom Servo. <laughs> but Tom Servo was always there. What I. What I he's the robot, right? Yeah. Yeah. But three different voices. Well, it doesn't matter who does the voice. It's the the <laughs> physical presence on the screen. I beg to differ. Like, if you had, like, I don't know, like, Ernest from Ernest Goes to Camp be the voice of Animal, I think it would be a big difference, right? I'm talking about their physical presence on okay. the screen. Okay, okay. So if you had Bro. taken the skeleton out of Brienne of Tarth and put, <laughs> and put somebody else inside of her. It's true. It's true. Well, I put somebody still be else inside same. of her. It's really <laughs> nasty here. So. <laughs> number two, one for you, Blake. Number one. Uh, number one. I also had Seinfeld, but I hope he did, and it was uh, Larry David and Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> did you do Seinfeld AI, or did you do the Rachel Seinfeld? Oh, the AI, of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, number one for you, Brian? Number one for me, John Bernthal, The Punisher. He's coming back. He's coming back, baby. For uh, Daredevil series. Oh, I'm so excited about that. Yep. Uh, number one for you, Jim? 
Number one, I think everybody knows, I'm probably going to say uh, Coach Eric Taylor, uh-huh. Kyle Chandler, Friday Night Lights. Do you like that show? It is fantastic. Oh. Couldn't couldn't have been anybody else to play that role, and it would have been nowhere near as good. You don't think Bob Denver could pull it off? I do not think Bob Denver could pull well, it off. Well, he was dead. But besides that, besides death. Yes. Um. Because you can have, try and have like Billy Bob Thornton be the coach of the football team. Oh, it's just, just terrible. It's just not the same. Not the yeah. same. <laughs> not the same at all. Jason, you're number one. Uh, it is um, Nathan Fillion, and I hope we do with Alan Tudyk uh, oh. for um, Firefly, like a leaf on the wind. And Jeff, me sore. Finish off us. I finish us was, off. What's that your was rolling Rogue One. Oh. <laughs> Uh, my number one is uh, KJ Appa from Riverdale. Yeah, baby! Look at those abs! <laughs> Nobody else can pull off those abs. Yeah! What about Michael B. Jordan? Mm. I take it back. Michael B. Jordan could have <laughs> played uh, Archie Andrews better than KJ Appa. Damn it, now my list sucks. <laughs> what I'm about sorry. Tate? Is he in a TV show? I don't know. Could he play a... Uh... Oh, Tate could definitely play Archie Andrews. <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> This is a bad list. I screwed it up. What about Joe Manganiello? Oh. No, I don't think he could pull it off. I mean, he sure oh, could pull it off, baby. Are you sure you don't want to have a 50-year-old guy playing an 18-year-old? Well, we already have a 30-year-old guy playing an 18-year-old, so. Uh, we did have, since the short notice, we did have a, because of the intern, uh, Dr. Number One is the only one that sent in a thing. We got a really good list for Harrison Ford next week. <laughs> Just to let you guys yeah. know. No, uh, uh, a, a Canadian of the Year sent something on. Oh, okay. I can. I'll, I'll, you'll Pretty read sure that my one. My wife sent in something too. Oh, yeah, she did. Never mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, about. three. We got at least three. Doctor Number One, Harrison Ford in The Force Awakens. Harrison Ford, more American graffiti. Harrison Ford, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Number two, Harrison Ford, Star Wars Holiday Special. And number one, Harrison Ford, Solo, A Star Wars Story. He's almost unrecognizable in it. Uh, also, so he one said, of those was a television show. And he's also said, well, that's a shitty top five. <laughs> so, uh, we got Jim. Well, I'm still look, finding it on here. Oh, okay. are, are you sure Honorable that mentions, or do we do that after we do the? We can, you can do yours, guys. Are, are you sure that wasn't the Harrison Ford list that he was sending in? Mm, I don't think so. No, you don't think no, so. Okay, I don't think so. I, I had Fred Rogers from Mister Rogers' Neighborhood. <laughs> no um, one else could pull that off. You're right. Not the Saturday Night Live one. I had Bob Oldenkirk from Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think he was almost as good as Walter White, or uh, mm-hmm. was uh, uh, a but, bad. But, how, how about Bob Odenkirk from Better Call Saul? Do you think someone else could have done that? Animal. I don't. Okay. Animal. Uh, a bed from Community. What about uh, Bob oh. Odenkirk? What about Bob Odenkirk from Mr. Show? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like Mr. Show. But I didn't get too far into it, so it could have grown on me. But All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take KJ Appa off my list mm-hmm. and add, uh, uh, what's his name, Abed, to it. Uh, Danny, Danny Pudi. Pudi. Uh, who did Thanks, you, Jeff. I mean, uh, that Canadian first. of the Year, Brian. Ow. What he said Charlie Cox is Daredevil. Ah. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I had a couple honorable well, mentions. Hold on, we got. Oh, I had oh. the, the uh, Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin was another one of my. Ah. Uh, Michael Clark Duncan is better. Uh, Jen Morris had, well, this is an easy list. Elijah Dushku as Faith. Uh, Anthony Stewart Head as Rupert. Uh, Allison Hannigan as Willow. Really? I thought Warwick Davis did a better job. James Mars does as William Spike Pratt. And Sarah Michelle Geller as Buffy. All from Buffy the Vampire. Yes. Player. You know, if her list included Muppets, <laughs> I, would have, I would have thought that would have been the most awesome I agree. Episode. I agree. Well, mine had a vampire on it. I had uh, Martin oh, Sheen oh, as yeah. President Bre- uh, uh, Jed uh, Bartlett from uh, West, West Wing. Wing. Yep. I had Ryan Hurst as Opie, Opie. from Sons of Anarchy. And I had Barbara Eden as Jeannie. Ah. Uh, Brian, anything? Do, 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 do. Real quick. Um, do, 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 do. Let me see if I can find it. I had it wrote down somewhere. Okay. Come back to me. Okay. Well, I had uh, Cassandra Peterson as Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was our top five this week. Scab, thanks for visiting this week. We do, appreciate it. Do you have anything that you want to uh, plug? Plug? Uh, 
your Oscars party on Sunday? I do have an Oscars party on Sunday, but where can we find you on Twitter? At Miami Town Jeff, that's where we can get you. Okay. What books do you have on Amazon? Uh, I've got Cincinnati Haunted Handbook, Nashville Haunted Handbook, Chicago. Twin City Chicago Haunted Handbook, uh, Zombies: The True Story of the Titanic Disaster, floppy nominee book. <laughs> uh, okay. Thanks for coming out, and you'll be back next week. We'll see what your number, your ratings are. And if you have anything new to plug then, too. Yes. <laughs> uh, bad idea of the week. Um, number 18. Taking pictures of Bruce Willis with dementia. Please stop. Dementia. Or, dementia. Not dementia. <laughs> I, I, I think you can pronounce it dementia. Yeah. I, I think it should be taking spelled. pictures of anybody with dementia. How about that? That would work, too. Mm-hmm. That works, too. And and asking why do they look confused? I just want to punch them in the throat who takes that picture. Uh, let's see here. But I'm not allowed to say that on Twitter or Facebook because then I'll get suspended. Down the hall. Uh, <laughs> thanks for showing up, Brian. You got anything real quick? Uh, Ian McShane from ah, Deadwood. Okay. Al Swearingen. There you go. I thought he would been on your. Uh, list. We did get to ask where your jo- your dad jokes were. Um, oh, next they're week. right here. Well, we've got one ready to go. Hurry up, go. Go. Wait, no, I'm, I'm. Go. I'm getting it. And yeah. go. Wait, wait. We, we we need to try this candy that we got from yeah, Sweetwater. Sweetwater.com. We bought our mixer from Sweetwater.com, and they sent us a bag of candy with it. Maybe they listened. They appreciate our business. Or they listened. Oh, here you can have a dad joke. There, it's a laffy taffy. Ooh, jackpot. <laughs> uh, Jason, you get this. Uh, Ew. Is that oh. a warhead? It's a mm-hmm. mint thing. Key lime mint. Oh, that sounds cool. Hard candy. Jeff, you get the fireball. Well, I don't dislike fireballs. <laughs> That's a big one. What do you got, Jim? Brian, you got a joke? Uh, Jeff, do you want the starlight mint or the Tootsie Roll? Uh, whichever I. you won't care if I don't eat. Okay, Blake, which one do you want? <laughs> I want to see that Tootsie Roll. Yeah! Give me then the I'll Tootsie take the roll. starlight mint. Brian, what's your joke? Hey, Jeff. Uh, yes, Brian. What did Spartacus say when the lion ate his wife? I don't know, Brian. What did Spartacus say when the lion ate his wife? Nothing. He was gladiator. <laughs> I threw the rim shot in. I know yes, you couldn't I hear, can't it, hear it, but <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> mm, this is a delicious starlight mint. Ooh, let me try this uh, sour apple Laffy Taffy. I've never had the sour apple. Oh, it's the best. I just get a stupid fireball. <laughs> Roger says goodbye. We don't have titles for the show? Yeah. Oh, titles for the show. Go. Titlies for the show. I have Jesus, an adapted screenplay. Just a hole and a spigot. Pirates of Babylon 5. So I had. I had. It depends on your family. You're spelled you are. <laughs> I think we can criticize the Soviets. (laughs) (laughs) And we're done. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Uh, I saw a flashing butt tin. Um, That was a different red. Shut up, Jason. Fax machine, you're fired. My God, man. All you need is a Muppet and a sock. (laughs) And I thought Warwick Davis was a better Willow. (laughs) Uh, I have the Susan Lucci of Hobie. Uh, Sonny Doug. 482 times. 482 times. Episode 482, 482 times. And I was not prepared for this. (laughs) I also had I was not prepared for this. I had the whores of war. (laughs) I think Blake was talking about that. That whores? The whores? The whores. Okay. (laughs) When the whores come to town. Uh, Sonny D is Doug's new nickname. Oh, the Sonny Doug was better. Uh, Pumpkin Chunks. (laughs) <laughs> I have pumpkin chunks. <laughs> Literary criticism, throat punch, and the skeleton of Brie Ann Tarth. <laughs> I have, we don't have to say allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> I have, then you're allowed to lie. Uh, 
I have canned laughter. Uh, just edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I hit the wrong button again, <laughs> and then all I need is a muppet and a sock. <laughs> I like the Russian one, the Soviets. <laughs> I think we can criticize the Soviets. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. Uh, that one got the biggest laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and we are a history podcast. That's right. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to get so many new listens. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Thank you if you are just joining us because you wanted to hear us criticize the Soviets. <laughs> and thank you for actually listening to the entire thing. <laughs> Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. From walking dead to talking heads, from comic books to TV sets, there's a history. Not so bad, there's a history. It's the history of bad. So bad. The history of bad. It's bad. History of bad ideas. Podcast. Oh, yes. You are listening to a hobby.